Every cell in your body contains DNA, which is a complicated molecular structure containing all of your genetic information. The structure is known as a double helix, which is like a twisted ladder. Each spiral is made up of a backbone of alternating sugar and phosphate units. Each rung of the ladder is made up of two halves, called bases, linking the two backbone strands together. There are four bases, A, T, C and G, which form complementary pairs, A matching with T and C matching with G. A SNP is a single change in base pair between two people. The most SNPs have no effect on human health or development, some have harmful effects. For example, where Chris may have base pair C, G at one specific point, Adam may have A, T in the same place. This may result in Adam having a genetic disorder. Sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis and a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease are all associated with SNPs. There are also over 80 SNPs linked with breast, prostate and ovarian cancers. So it's important to be able to identify these changes in DNA. Fluorescence is a good way to detect the presence of these SNPs. DNA has 3 billion bases in the genome. Any two people are 99.9% .9 the same. But it's the 0.1% that's really interesting that gives us our difference, let's say hair colour or skin colour. Some of those differences in our genomes are linked to diseases with a genetic component. In a chemistry level, it comes down to single base changes in DNA. So really we want an easy way to detect those changes. Normally SNPs are to do with our genetic diversity when we're born. But of course you can have a particular base that over the course of someone's life might change and that's called a mutation. If you like, a mutation is a kind of SNP. The way we might detect that mutation would be the same way that we detect a SNP. So particular diseases we're interested in are certain types of cancer, for example bowel cancer. So we work with a surgeon and that surgeon wants to cut out bits of diseased tissue but he doesn't know exactly how much of that tissue to cut out. So if we can use our probe to show that that tissue actually has the mutant base in, then that will inform him as to how much of that tissue he should cut out. At this stage, it's a question of taking a sample, bringing it to the lab, and then looking at the fluorescence. I think it would be great to have an in situ way of doing that. So you can imagine in the future, you might treat the tissue with some sort of chemical that would light up if the mutation were there. Fluorescence occurs when a molecule absorbs energy from light and then re-emits the energy in the form of light at a different wavelength. Many household items are fluorescent. The optical brightness in washing powder and detergents fluoresce, making clothes appear whiter. Also, tonic water contains the fluorescent molecule, or fluorophore, quinine. To work out which SNP a section of DNA contains, we artificially manufacture a probe. This is a short strand of DNA designed to match with one form of a SNP. It has a fluorescent molecule, called anthracene, in the place of one of the bases. Then, we join the strand of DNA we are analysing to the probe. It forms a double helix. If all the bases in the strand being analysed match with the probe, a decrease in anthracene fluorescence will be observed. If there is a mismatch, the fluorescence will increase. This change in intensity shows us which form of the SNP is present. The fluorescence of the anthracene can be reduced, or quenched, in two ways through contact with the faces of the adjacent DNA base pairs, or by interacting with water molecules. In a fully matching double helix, the structure is ideal. Because the anthracene sits between the base pairs, this leads to a strong interaction between the anthracene and the faces of the bases. This explains the reduction in emissions when the bases match. However, in a double helix where there is a mismatch, the structure is disrupted. This leads to the formation of a pocket between the base pairs in which the anthracene sits. Water cannot enter the pocket, so cannot quench the fluorescence. Also, the space created around the anthracene leads to a much weaker interaction with the bases, so the fluorescence increases. Hopefully we can imagine a situation where someone might go to the doctors and they may have a simple test and the particular SNP combinations that they have in their genes might be identified very easily. The doctor would then be able to tell the patient, well, you might have a slightly increased likelihood of developing a disease. That would, of course, be very powerful information for them. 